Hi, welcome. We're looking at Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek, uh, chapter 1, sections 1 1.4, 1.5, 1 1.6. That takes us right up to the end of the chapter. Now, sections 1.5 and 1.6 are pretty straightforward. 1.5 accents and stress. There's a great explanation there. I won't go over it for you. Uh, 1.6, again, punctuation. No need to talk about that. You can read it for yourself. But section 1.4, diphthongs and iota subscripts, is worth just looking at a little bit more carefully. And it raises some related issues of pronunciation, which are worth just thinking about and clarifying, just so you can start to see why we pronounce the Greek letters in the way that we do. So first, you can see what a diphthong is. A diphthong is a pair of vowels which are pronounced as a single sound, rather than as two separate sounds. And there are seven common diphthongs in Greek. They're here, and the pronunciations are noted in uh, Duff's book. I won't go through them all, you can see them all there. But let me make a couple of points uh, about them. Uh, this diphthong, the U diphthong, as in feud, it comes in the form with the short epsilon and the long E, the eta, and they're pronounced exactly the same. As it happens, this one's really rare, and you're not going to come across it until much later in the book. Um, and it's never, as far as I can make out, it's never or very rarely in a form of a word that you have to memorise. It arises because a word is changed, a verb is changed, for example, by the addition of an extra bit of the, another letter at the beginning of the word. In other words, you don't need to worry about it. But don't try and pronounce it any differently. They're pronounced the same. This allows us to highlight what I uh, hinted at earlier in an earlier video about pr pronouncing this letter, the eta. Some people will pronounce this a, like hey or pay, and call it eta. The problem with that is that then this long vowel, the eta, will sound exactly the same as this diphthong, epsilon, iota. This sounds like a. Whereas if you pronounce this like air, then you have a whole set of completely distinct vowel sounds. So a, sorry, i, a, oi, wi, ow, U, U, and then a, e, i, o, u, shorter and distinct from u, u, e, o. And get used to pronouncing those letters in that slightly overdone way so as to distinguish them. This will mean something very, very useful. When you come to learn uh, the vocabulary, and you've got quite a lot of vocabulary to learn, if you're used to pronouncing letters, um, the diphthongs, and the individual vowel letters in this distinct and unique way, remembering the pronunciation will help you to, will enable you completely to remember the spelling of the word. At least with, you know, there'll be a couple of times, is it a double lambda or something or a single lambda, but certainly you'll be able to remember what the vowels are and you'll be able to remember the consonants pretty much as well. This distinguishes Greek from how modern English works. Um, one of the uh, guys at Emmanuel, uh, one of the ladies who's doing the, the, the course, uh, working through this book, pointed out that the letter A in English has many, many different pronunciations, like A, hat, A, late, A, father, A, chocolate, O, what, I, manage. That's because English spelling and English pronunciation has evolved in a chaotic way over hundreds and hundreds of years. We're concentrating here on an artificially produced system of pronunciation, which is probably unlike any Greek person ever spoke, certainly unlike how modern Greek people speak, but it's designed simply to help us to learn the written language. We're not really interested in speaking New Testament Greek, but in reading it. And so the way that we speak is designed simply to facilitate ease of learning the written language. Now, a couple of other points. Notice that a diphthong, like it says in Duff's book, is pronounced with a single sound. I, A, OI, and so on. This differentiates it from other cases when vowels appear next to each other, but they're not diphthongs. If two vowels appear together and they're not in this combination, we need to pronounce them distinctly and separately. So, for example, consider this word. The word Phileo. Phileo, it's the lexical form of the verb I love. Well, we don't pronounce this philu, but phileo. Sounds a bit odd, but we pronounce each of the constant, each of the vowels, e, o, and i, with a distinct and separate sound. Phileo. Similarly, this word. Remember the breathing? Well spotted. 
agapao. Not agapao, but agapao. A o at the end. It also means I love. Another word meaning I love. In other words, we slightly artificially pronounce the words in such a way that we highlight distinct vowel sounds, unless it's a diphthong. And if it's a diphthong, we pronounce it as a single, uh, single sound, like it says in Duff. Okay, a couple of other things. The iota subscript um, it is actually a relic of an ancient diphthong from many, many, many years before the New Testament was written. Um, but now just uh, think of it really as part of the spelling of certain words. And uh, iota subscripts sometimes appear on some vowels, particularly, or in fact only, these three. And it's just worth, worth pointing out exactly where they're written. They're written in the middle of the alpha, underneath the stem of the iota, and in the middle of the omega. Um, again, they don't affect the pronunciation at all because the, the uh, iota is small, it's subscripted, it doesn't uh, affect the pronunciation of these, but um, they're part, it's part of the spelling of the word. We'll come up to it quite um, quickly in the next chapter or so. so, but don't worry about it for now, it's just a highlight that it's there and um, that's how to, uh, how to deal with it. Okay, so now what we've got to is um, by the time you've finished reading uh, sections 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, you've got to the end of all the introductory material. There are some exercises at the end of chapter one, which I suggest you do. In the next video, I'm going to do one of them for you, uh, just so you can hear how I, stumbling <laughs> as I do, pronounce um, the Greek of John chapter one, verses one to 14. And I would encourage you, if you feel you have a rough handle on all this material, let's move on to chapter two. Don't move on to chapter two if you can't write the Greek letters yet, or if you can't remember what they all are, but if you occasionally get a bit muddled in the middle of the alphabet and some of the letters you get them the wrong way around, don't let that slow you down, because very quickly you'll get the hang of that as we move on, and all this stuff which right now feels so daunting and unfamiliar will feel like second nature. Remember, little and often, 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day for five or six days a week, plenty of prayer, hold on tight, and we'll jump in uh, after the next video, which I'll do the exercise from chapter one, We'll jump straight into chapter two and we'll start working on basic sentences, okay? God bless, keep working hard, see you next time.